Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, she wanted to sue the neighbors, but ended up setting up the police officer. The second story, just because he's your cousin and earns more, doesn't mean he should buy you a car. The third story, the dude spoke negatively about my project work, but in the end I became his teacher. The first story, entitled neighbor harasses my parents, brings them to court, and ends up getting the police chief investigated and making his adultery public. This story isn't my story but my parents. At this time they were newlyweds and had moved into a lovely apartment complex. Since they skipped having a large wedding ceremony, both of their parents furnished their new apartment from top to bottom. Everything would be going smoothly, right? Well, on the day of moving the truck was obviously placed close to the building, though not in any way to block the other occupant's way of getting in or out. But this displeased one. Enter entitled woman, we shall call crazy. She was the niece of the then mayor of our city and thought she could do whatever she wanted. She never just talked to people. According to my dad, she would scream and yell first. On moving day, she came out of nowhere and started to scream and berate my father about how trashy the moving truck looked in front of the building and to move it. My dad is a big guy and just ignored her, knowing that getting into it wouldn't do them any good. This wasn't their last encounter with crazy. She yelled at my dad about how he parked his car once after he came home from a long shift and what made it worse was that her entitled mother joined in on that. Yet again, he ignored her and just went inside. The breaking point came when my dad was bringing my mom home from the hospital. She had gotten a seasonal illness and had spent some time in the hospital. My dad was helping my mom inside, trying to hold her up and call on the elevator, but it wasn't coming down. He was confused and for a moment had my mom sit down. In comes Crazy, who starts to wildly scream at my dad about what was he doing. She was holding an elevator for her friends and told him to stop trying to call on it. My dad tried to explain that my mom is sick and he just needed to get to their apartment so she can rest. But this isn't good enough and she goes to yell and flail her arms in front of my sick mother's face, screeching. My dad has had it and yells at her loudly to basically F off and to get away from my mother. She takes offense to this and claims she will call the police chief on him. Just as she says this, the police chief just walks into the lobby and she calls him over. My dad didn't think much about why he was there at the time, assuming he got called or had a friend who lives in the building, but he did notice the man looked nervous. Skip to a couple of weeks later, she wants to sue my parents for their behavior. Of course she thinks the court is on her side because she's the mayor's niece. In court they ask my dad about what happened that day, and of course he mentions the police chief being in the building. The police chief is looking pale, and the mayor is actually in court, looking annoyed with his niece. She was trying to force my parents out of the building, just ignoring the fact that she's treated everyone in that building like utter SH. And of course the other occupants sided with my parents about her behavior, telling their own stories to the court. One thing all of their stories had in common was seeing the police chief in the building multiple times. She wants to keep fighting, but her uncle pulls her aside and basically tells her, you're going to drop this and you're going to leave the building. Unbeknownst to her and the few occupants of the building, the police chief had a mistress who lived in the building and he was somehow paying for her living expenses. The mayor was aware of his adultery since they are friends, but didn't want it to be public. She begrudgingly accepts this and moves out, but her actions put into motion a long investigation of the police chief's behavior. A few months later it's found out that he had multiple mistresses, was embezzling money from the state so he could afford this and hiding it in the ceiling of his own home, a home he shared with his wife and kids. His mistresses ended up turning on him because he didn't treat them all equally. The mistress who lived in the same building as my parents was his favorite. He bought her anything she wanted, even a house, and the others just got color TVs. It was the 70s, guys. He got brought to court over the embezzlement and even asked his wife to be his character witness, and she actually did it. As far as my dad remembers, he somehow avoided jail but lost his job. The second story is… Cousin Demands Free Car First, a little context. I'm 32 years old and work as a banker for a German-speaking bank. I live in the US and help with contracts and other business meetings with US companies. I make a nice bit of money and have earned two additional BA degrees and my MBA while being here in the US. I have a cousin in Europe who's a school teacher 
and he's married to a woman who does not work, so you can imagine they don't have much expendable income for desires. Most of their income covers their necessities. Anyway, for future references, here are the abbreviations for the following scenario. EC equals entitled cousin. SP equals salesperson. Me equals take a guess. Last Christmas I took my girlfriend, now fiancé to Europe, and we did a small Euro trip to the typical Europe destinations, Paris, Munich, and London. While in Europe we spent some time with my family there, I introduced her to my brother, grandparents, etc. I also encountered EC. Most conversations I had with him were always how tight money was for him, and he needed a new car. At that point I didn't read too much into it, because money was tight for a lot of my family in Europe. In one conversation, EC asked me to accompany him to a car dealership to check out some new cars. He wanted to upgrade the old rust bucket he was driving. I said sure. I got my fiancé and my sister-in-law appointments to a premium beauty salon. Massage, manicures, pedicures, etc. While she was having fun, EC picked me up and we went to an authorized Jeep dealership. We walked around checking out the new models, and whatnot, and even took models on a test drive. EC liked the Grand Cherokee, and SP explained the benefits and features, and what options there are to buy, finance, lease. So EC says he would want to buy the car, and SP started to prep the paperwork. While SP was doing that, we continued expecting his soon-to-be ride. The SP got to us, and said the paperwork was ready. This is the conversation that ensued. SP to EC. Here's the paperwork for buying the vehicle. Because you're a new customer, we need to check for the vehicle in advance, and wait from the bank to confirm the cost will be covered. EC. No problem. Money won't be a problem. Hear me. Take this. EC shoves the paperwork in front of me, and I assumed he wanted me to look over it to ensure everything looks fine. I read through the fine print and asked some follow-up questions, and concluded the contract seems like a great deal. Me passed the paperwork back to EC. EC. Why are you handing it back to me? Me. Because it's your contract. EC. So I have to sign it? Me. Yes, it's your deal. EC. Okay. He signs the paperwork and hands it back to SP. SP. Good, now if I could have the check so our finance department can call the bank to confirm the funds are available. EC to me. Give SP a check. Me. Excuse me? EC. Write him a check. Me. Um, no. EC. What do you mean no? You're rich and here to buy the car. Why else do you think you're here? Me. One, why should I buy you a car? Two, I'm here because you asked me to be here and go car shopping. I assume to help you with getting a good deal. EC. I don't have the money to buy a car like this. It's Christmas and I want this car. Now write him a check and let's go. Me. I don't care what you want. I'm not buying this car for you. You want it, you have to buy it. EC is getting angry and says, I can't believe how greedy you are. You work for XYZ Bank and make five times the salary I do. You need to pay for this car. Me. You are correct. I make five times more money than you. And that's even before my yearly bonus. And just because I make and have more money doesn't mean I'm obligated to buy you or anyone else in our family anything. EC. Listen to me. I need a new car. You have spare income. I don't. So be a good family member and write a check. You gave our uncle 5k euros to buy a car. How's this any different? Me. Our uncle takes care of our grandmother, aka his mother, and as a thanks to him for doing that I sent him that money to help him buy a new car, and that lowered his monthly expenses and was safer for our grandmother to ride in. EC. So you have the money to pay for this car? Me. In theory, yes, I have the funds to buy three of these cars if I wanted to, but I will not write a check for this car, not now, not ever. EC. Write this check or I will sue you. SP steps in. Gentlemen, it appears that I won't be getting a check here today. EC. You will get a check. He's going to write one now. Me to SP. It appears that EC brought me here under false pretenses, and since he does not have the funds necessary for the purchase of this vehicle, he wasted your time and mine. I'm telling you, you will not receive a check from me. If a check is written today, it will be one of EC's. EC. Stop being so selfish. Buy the car now. Me. F you, EC. We're through here. SP is annoyed and asks me to please leave, and tells EC to get out and to never come back again. EC. No, I'm taking that Jeep and me is going to pay for it. SP to EC. You will leave now or our legal department will sue you for breach of contract. EC. What contract? SP shows him the signed contract and says, The one you just signed. You have 30 seconds or I will call the police and have you arrested. EC gets up and leaves shouting and yelling. SP turns to me. Did he really expect you to just buy him a new car? Me. I guess so. I know I've caused you a lot of trouble and feel free to say no, but may I use your phone to call my uncle so I can get picked up? SP. 
No problem, sir. Would you like a coffee while we wait? Me. Thank you, but I already cost so much of your time and money there's no need. SP. Please, sir, I insist. I'm as baffled as you are. My uncle said he would be there in a few minutes, and SP and I sat down to a cup of coffee and talked about what just happened. He asked me if his legal department should pursue this matter or if they should just forget about the incident. I told him EC didn't have a lot of money and that they most likely would never see a penny from him. Maybe I should have told them to sue. It's been three months since I heard from EC, and the majority of our family took my side on the matter. As a thank you gift to my uncle and grandmother, I bought them plane tickets to the US first class and sweets for the wedding in the fall. And I believe it goes without saying that EC and his wife and parents are not invited to my wedding. And the last story is... Not who you expected to see at the front of the class? I'm one of those people who can't sit still and I have a couple of jobs. I started off in the emergency services but drifted into IT. Once in IT, I did a part-time degree in computing and then got a second job teaching part-time at the university where I got my bachelor's. I went on to get a master's in education alongside my teaching. I now work part-time for my IT employer and work teaching a few online and face-to-face -face courses at the university. The university also offers short courses in some technology topics, which I also teach, as I have instructor certifications from the various vendors. This sort of sets the scene. Last year, the company I work for was taken over, and we had a new management team arrive. Most of the team are okay, and will ask about things they're unsure of, apart from one who has a really inflated opinion of himself. We haven't really had much to do with each other, but he's seen me in meetings, and I've had some negative feedback on the project work I've done, which can be classed as someone flexing their muscles. You know, I suppose this does work, but I would have done X, Y, or Z instead. I discovered he was not really interested in those lower down the food chain, so he didn't do a great deal of due diligence on who he was working with. A month or so back, we were on a conference call, and I don't have my video turned on for Teams meetings, just an avatar. In the middle of the meeting, it was announced that there would be training on some of the new hardware we were deploying and that the sessions would be run by the university I teach at. I already knew all about this and had prepared a little overview of what would be taught. Before I got a chance to comment, our manager chipped in, I can't see the point of this. What can they teach us at a university? We have tech guys here doing the work. Those who can do, those who can't teach. Not the wisest comment. Roll forward a couple of weeks and I'm standing at the front of my classroom at the university with their faculty dean. My PowerPoint slides are ready to go and the class starts arriving. In walks the manager and he immediately recognizes me and starts to walk over, asking why I was there as I wasn't booked on this course. The dean asks him to take a seat as the class will begin shortly. The manager looks a little puzzled but takes a seat. One or two others from the day job walk in and there are a few amused looks passed between them. They figured out something the manager hasn't. The clock hits the top of the hour and the course officially starts. The dean turns to the class and starts his introduction. Hello and welcome to the course. I'm the faculty dean and I would like to say hi and introduce you to Tuba61, who's your tutor for this course. The look on the face of the manager made my day. I'm taking great pleasure in pointing out all the places he's gone wrong in his assignments, usually along the lines of, yes, this approach would work, but it's much more efficient to do X, Y, or Z, especially as that's the accepted best practice for this technology. I hope you love these stories. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new video comes out.